Welcome to the World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco, and again, we're blessed with the presence of Eric Karlstrom. Over the last six or seven months, we've been talking about isometric warfare, uh, energy weapons, and what and the atrocities, the torture that's being committed to uh, citizens throughout the world. We're going to take it a little deeper this this week. So welcome to the World Beyond Belief, Dr. Eric Kallstrom. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paul Marco. And we've had <laughs> some very interesting conversations, and I certainly appreciate your efforts, you, you, you and, and Mindy. Uh, and now you've expanded, uh, again, some of you know, your contacts to include uh, uh, some very impressive uh, targeted individuals, TIs like uh, Ramola D. and Dr. Catherine Horton. So we're starting to put together a group of of people who uh, uh, are highly motivated to understand this, this, these programs and to uh, defeat them, expose and defeat. And uh, so let me just quickly introduce myself and then hopefully we'll okay. pick it up uh, from where we, we last uh, left it off uh, with our last interview on this subject of euphemistically, it's called gang stalking. I think it's more of a citizen neutralization program. But uh, so, yeah, I'm a retired geography professor, taught for 30 years at three universities in, in the United States, uh, Northern Arizona University, University of Kansas, and then for the most uh, longest period, uh, California State University status loss in the Central Valley of California. I taught geography, physical geography was my specialty, soils, landforms, and climate. Uh, but, you know, um, uh, as really, stemming out of my personal life and my uh, obligation to teach a course uh, called Human Ecology. In the 90s, I really started kind of expanding my uh, purview beyond physical geography into, you know, human and cultural and physical geography or uh, political geography uh, and, uh, you know, what was going on in the world and writing about it in local newspapers, etc. And this morphed into several websites that I maintain now. Even though I officially retired five years ago, I really have been fairly busy. <clears throat> and my websites of interest here, I think, are 911nwo.com, uh, which I was right on the 911 hoax, uh, fraud, uh, operation, uh, cover story, uh, simply because of you know my understanding of, of how the world works and that the intelligence agencies run you know the country and they they do the terrorist events and they do and they always have cover stories for these terrorist events so you know the whole osama bin laden cover story is very very flimsy and uh, so i i wrote an article in 2002 reflections on the origins of 911 three scenarios in which i in which i concluded that of course you know it was not uh, osama bin laden he was a cia asset back in the 80s right. uh named uh, tim osmond uh, from Saudi Arabia, and uh, and of course it wasn't just blowback from the Arabs. Of course it was an inside job, although more complicated. Um, and then uh, we've done further interviews on that sort of thing, showing all the the uh, uh, op uh, the the drills that were operating, uh, forty six plus drills right. on the day of and leading up to nine eleven, uh, which of course went live on that day. And this is how the military and and uh, other organizations operate with many, many organizations involved in, you know, compartmented drills, and then these can flip live on a, on a day. And this is what happened. This is all based on the work of Webster Tarpley, uh, who's an economic historian. And uh, you and I did, a, I think, an interview on that, and uh, so people can look that up. Well, out of that website, um, I, I got into various related subjects, such as the New World Religion, since I live in Crestone, Colorado. And obviously the New World Order wants to come in with a New World Religion, which is actually <laughs> satanic, <laughs> and, and uh, which of would course. help explain why this process of gang stalking is so diabolical, because uh, the roots of the, the movement are uh, indeed diabolical. And uh, so my the website that morphed out of my 911nwo.com website, which I put together uh, in the fall, and now I'm working on almost strictly, is gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. And uh, so our latest interviews have been, you know, posted on that. 
as well as the the informational posts that I put on there. So all of my websites are meant to be kind of digital libraries and resources for people. Uh, as a retired professor, I you know I have the ability to read and write and to kind of connect the dots. And uh, it's really the connecting the dots which is so important because there you know it's it's it gives us the patterns that we need to understand what's happening. Um, also, I've got a website, uh, naturalclimatechange.org, which, of course, debunks the uh, man-caused global warming uh, hoax myth uh, cover story, uh, mm -hmm. which, you know, is another story altogether. Uh, uh, and then another one, uh, San Luis Valley Waterwatch.com, where it's dealing with water issues in the San Luis Valley of Colorado. But, but let's, let's go back to this topic again of gang stalking which is the, the, the kind of the misnomer, actually, uh, euphemistic, euphemism. It, it could be a term that actually the intelligence agencies gave us for what is a Global Phoenix program, and, uh, you know, which is the citizen targeting program that was used in the Vietnam War. And uh, uh, as, as I get deeper and deeper into the research, I found that others have gone before me uh, who've written some excellent books Last time we, we re referenced uh, Mark M. Rich's book, uh, New World War, Revolutionary Methods uh, of Political Control. And uh, this book is very well referenced. It gives the military documents, you know, through the years. It gives many of the laws that have been passed through Congress uh, concomitantly. There's a professor, there you professorial go. word for you. I mean, this stuff is like kind of proceeding apace. Uh, with with the secret government, and uh, and not only that, but the patents. Okay, so you take the patents, you take the laws, which which legalizes this stuff actually, uh, and then you take the military documents, which say things like, you know, U.S. Army War College uh, uh, documents talking about the revolution in military affairs. That was a 1994 uh, paper by Metz and somebody else. And uh, they're saying, okay, we want to use electronic warfare in this asymmetrical new kind of warfare, which is the same thing as unconventional warfare, which is the same thing as military operations other than war, These, uh, which is the same thing as low-intensity conflict. And, and, you know, and, and you start to put together the dots and you see, oh, well, the, the Phoenix program, this takedown of the civilian support system for... Uh, for say the Vietnam War, or the Viet Cong in that case, of South Vietnam during the Vietnam War, that, that was moved into the death squads of Central America and South America, became the basis for the death squad operations in, uh, in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq and, and uh, no other, other countries. But just to give the big picture, uh, you know, I go online and I learn things by reading articles. Uh, the 2017 uh, military budget in the United States is $773.5 billion. Okay, well, of course, the United States has been in a war economy ever since World War II, and yet we have not had a declared war since World War II, so all of them are technically illegal. Many of these are uh -huh. police actions. Uh, we have now five or six hot wars going, and we have... 134 countries in which our U.S. Special Operations Command, or SOCOM, is operating these low-intensity conflicts uh, or asymmetrical war conflicts to, to destabilize the governments, put in the people we want, and ultimately to get their resources, right? We don't want to pay for those resources. Sure. We just want them. We want them. And it's a lot cheaper for Wall Street and the corporatocracy for our government to act on their behalf and to go take and you know really what what the the question that keeps popping up in my mind paul is i don't remember a time and i'm now 67 years young <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember a time in my life when when there was a vote in congress or a poll in america asking congress and the american people if if we wanted to conquer the world if we wanted what? to be the world's empire right uh there was no such consensus. What we've had, and we can find it in the documentary record, is a consortium of, of very powerful business people, we'll call it Wall Street for now, um, uh, who control Washington, D.C., the political spectrum, uh, and the think tanks, Council on Foreign Relations, and then through them, the military and the intelligence agencies, very important. So you've got this kind of nexus of, of, of 
elite power which has had in its mind to conquer the world <laughs> since World War II. That's it. And this is exactly what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we have all these illegal wars going on in the Middle East. You know, we spent trillions of dollars doing that. And, of course, that was, you know, in response to the blueprint put together by a think tank called the Project for a New American Century. Yes. Uh, came out in 2000. And these are, you know, a handful of people, 30 people saying, okay, what we need to do is we need to mobilize the American people for these foreign wars. Uh, and we doubt that the American people are going to be on board absent a cataclysmic event such mm -hmm. as a new Pearl Harbor. Okay, this, this is coming out of their own words. I mean, yes. it's right in their document, Rebuilding America's Defenses. And they said, okay, we have to increase our military budget uh, by at least a factor of two. Well, at the time, 2000, the military budget was 300 billion. And of course, as a result of Operation 911, uh, you know, our military budget has more than doubled. And, uh, we've not, and they said in the document, we need to have the capacity to prosecute multi-theater wars around the world. Sure. Well, guess what we're doing? We're prosecuting multi-theater wars. We're surrounding Russia and China, and we're going for the heartland of Eurasia. Yeah. Because going back to Halford Mackinder and, you know, the geopoliticians of England, you can, whoever controls Eurasia, which is two-thirds of the world's resources and two-thirds of the world's population, controls the world. So this is laid out in Zbigniew big Brzezinski's book, Between Two mm -hmm. Ages, United States and the Technotronic Era. Right. And, and Brzezinski says this in 1970, the leaders of the future are going to have at their disposal secret methods of warfare. And only a few of our forces are going to need to know about it in order to prosecute this new kind of warfare. Well, okay, so now we can start to connect some dots. <clears throat> the dots are PSYOP, which is an indispensable part of the targeting of individuals who have been put on these enemy lists who are now considered insurgents and adversaries mm -hmm. and domestic terrorists, etc. cetera. Um, uh, the PSYOP component and then the electronic warfare component. Now, both are dealing with technology which are classified to a large extent and have been developed over many, many decades. Uh, the PSYOP would go back and I think build upon a lot of the mind control research that the CIA did, you know, in the MK Ultra operation, which was not supposed to be known. Uh, Helms in 1973 destroyed all the documents. Unfortunately for him, there was, you know, eight or ten boxes of documents that survived the destruction of the official documents. Many were destroyed. But of course, MK Ultra builds on the Operation Bluebird and Artichoke programs preceding, and then going back to 1947, the Operation Chatter of the US Navy. So you have this nexus of military intelligence. Meanwhile, we've imported all these German paperclip uh, scientists. Uh, right after World War II and ongoing for decades. Uh, and uh, so many of those mind control and rocket scientists then moved right into positions of power in our NASA and universities, et cetera. Uh -huh. And they just kept doing what they were doing in Germany, which is let's conquer the world. And uh, they were a bunch of Satanists at heart, you know, because sure. uh, Hitler and the Tool Society and all that stuff, they're these, uh, you know, they, they, they actually were harnessing uh, the power of right. the dark world, and this is, they had a whole new physics going in uh, in Germany, you know, which uh, uh, is talked about by some authors nowadays, uh, can't remember the name of the guy, uh, he's got many books on this now, Farrell, Joseph P. Farrell, Joseph Dr. P. Joseph P. Farrell, has many books on the Nazi phenomenon and, and, and how it went global and underground after World War II, and how it's been kind of running the world ever since, you know. Uh -huh. So, of course, they've been working through NASA and and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the institutions of America, the CIA, in fact, the Galen organization of the Nazis, which was the Eastern Front uh, organization out of the, the Nazi Gestapo and spy system, uh, was merged with the new CIA and incorporated with the new CIA. So here you have the CIA being trained uh, by MI6 out of Britain, and, you, and then you have the German. So you have this international, these international cadres. They, they will possess, capture is the, is the term mm -hmm. you've been using. The capture, so England captured, Germany captured, United States captured 
all towards this one world government, one world religion objective. And, uh, and then the, the big secrets are, and this I think they're fingerprints, the PSYOP and the electronic warfare. Because as I said, SOCOM right now, it, well, I have 2014, there's an article by a guy named McGrath. Uh, got posted on mind control, cults.com. Uh, 2014, SOCOM, Special Operations Command, is involved in 134 nations in low intensity conflict. Okay, this is to destabilize and control those countries. Well, they're using the bag of tricks including PSYOP and electronic warfare, that they are also using to target individuals. Okay, well, the, the, uh, the most recent article I, I talked about, right. which is on my, uh, in a post on my website, is by a journalist named McGrath, uh, 2014, in which he just, he asks, how many wars is the United States involved with? Well, officially, none, because we have not had a declared war since World right. War II. And then, unofficially, we have our SOCOM and 134 nations doing this electronic warfare, PSYOP, uh, asymmetrical warfare. Uh, but uh, really, he, he concludes, there's only one war, and that's the whole world. Yeah. And if we look at the, uh, the, doc the documents of this year's budget of the military, uh, again, $773.5 billion dollars, what they're calling for is full spectrum dominance mm -hmm. of everything on the planet, from the bottom of the ocean up into space, from governments to your neighborhood. All of this is now the battle space. And what I'd like to talk about today, Paul, is these these uh, these very you know top secret technologies that they have. Uh, again, PSYOP and electronic warfare are the main two that I've identified through reading Mark Rich's book and, and how that this system can be scaled up and scaled down. And see, that's I think it's a weapon system which is extremely efficient. We can talk about that. Um, and uh, let, let me, before we jump into the specifics of PSYOP, especially this time, I hope, uh, let me just mention that I think that the Kennedy assassination Operation 911 and gang stalking have very, very fundamental similarities. And that is <clears throat> that all of these operations used PSYOP and electronic warfare ah. against the people. And uh, again, these I think we can now discern as the fingerprints of the, the New World Order, the secret government, whatever you want to call it, this international cadre or these international cadres that want to take over the world and want to dissolve the nation states and set up this one world government and new world order and new world religion which let's face it it's the worship of satan so yeah. if you're not on board with the worship of satan maybe now's the time to stand up and say no <laughs> yeah we're not on board we don't like this plan that's and, right and by the way we are 99.9 percent .9 of the world's population and we know you're doing this by stealth. We know you're doing this covertly. You've always done this covertly. Mm -hmm. And then once in a while, you know, these big ticket events like the assassination of Kennedy, 911, Iran Contra, etc., exposes the multiple heads of, yeah. this, of this monster. So here's why, I, uh, before we get into the PSYOP particularly, uh, again, going back to World War I, the Federal Reserve had just been established 2013 in the United States uh, under uh, Woodrow Wilson as president. He was being heavily manipulated by Rothschild agents such as Edward House, um, who actually had an office in the White House. And uh, of course, this then gave the central bankers of, of, the, interna of the international, you know, the Europe especially, uh, uh, the Federal Reserve gave them control of our economic system because now they, this private banking consortium could print the money and, and establish monetary policy. And then in 1947, of course, when the CIA formed, now these international bankers have a private army <clears throat> to do their work yeah. overtly. But uh, if we go back to World War I, coming out of World War I in England uh, in 2020, 21, something like that, uh, Sir John Rawlings Reese who's head of the Psychological Warfare Division of the British Army, 
established the Tavistock Institute, also known as Chatham House. And the goal was originally, and Sigmund Freud and, and all these really heavyweight uh, psychologists and psychiatrists were enlisted, uh, the goal was to um, study shell-shocked soldiers from World War I, uh, people who now we call a post-traumatic stress disorder. And the reason, the reason they wanted to study it was not to cure them, <laughs> but to figure out how to right. induce this on the public at large. In other words, how to control mass populations by trauma-based mind control. Okay. Yeah. So that got the whole thing kind of at a whole new level. And then, of course, the Nazis did all kinds of terrible mind control experiments in their concentration camps with Joseph Mengele yeah. and et cetera. And then these guys, a lot of these Nazi guys and British guys, was just fed right into the pipeline of, of the CIAs and, and the military in America's continuation of those things and it's become more and more scientific yeah okay so that gets the ball rolling okay 1963 november 22nd president john f kennedy uh not on board apparently with this new war in vietnam he was he was going to pull us out and uh he was very very ticked off at alan dulles who's head of the cia for the bay of pigs operation he was not even informed of this invasion into cuba Wow. Uh, he was not informed of the assassination of Patrice Lumumba in the Congo. So here's this new president who thinks he's going to be president. And meanwhile, Alan Dulles, who was actually controlling the Eisenhower administration in the 50s and who bragged that he did control yeah. Eisenhower, uh, he was doing his covert operations all around the world with the CIA at that time. And his his whole and he'd been doing and he, by the way, the first part of his career, he was co-founder with Sir Edmund, uh, Edward Mandel House of the Council on Foreign Relations, which still more or less gives the CIA its cues. Okay, so the Council on Foreign Relations is, forms right out of the, the British roundtable groups, the Royal Institute for International Affairs, which uh, go back a little bit before World War I, and uh, they are, uh, you know, a Rothschild agency as well. So uh, each, all of the British uh, kind of protectorates and Commonwealth countries at that time would have had their roundtable groups, and ours was the CFR. So even to this day, the CIA is going to take its cues from the CFR. So the CIA is the executive branch, and mm -hmm. maybe 90% of their activities are covert. In other words, uh, this illegal type stuff, torture. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, extraordinary rendition, uh, torture camp like Abu Ghraib, etc. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Operation Phoenix out of Vietnam, that was a CIA project. Uh, MK Ultra was a CIA project. So if you want to find, you know, the, the, the source of so much of this totally rotten stuff, go right to the CIA, you know. Yeah. But realize that they're serving their masters, right. their paymasters. They are a team that is selected uh, to you know, to carry out these operations. Okay, go up to 1963, there was Kennedy. He was wanting to pull us out of, of Vietnam. He wanted to, he, he did fire Alan Dulles, who's probably the most powerful man in America in 1964. Yeah. And then Dulles more or less just took his, his you know, contacts and moved into his Georgetown home and was the de facto head of the CIA. And according to one of our interviews that we also did about the history of Alan Dulles, he yeah. might may well have been the CEO of the Kennedy assassination, yeah. and then he got himself on the Warren Commission, you know, to massage the official investigation yeah. of, of the, and, and he famously said, well, go ahead and put it in the report because Americans don't read. I mean, the arrogance of these guys is off the chart, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, but, you know, he's very well contact, uh, connected. He was, he and his brother, John Foster Dulles, were, you know, uh, very prominent uh, lawyers in uh, Wall Street's major law firm, Sullivan and Cromwell, uh -huh. would represent the Rockefellers. And, and, you know, we can talk about the Harriman Bush Rockefeller uh, uh, power structure. You know, the Bush family goes right back into this, right back into the 20s, you know, with mm -hmm. uh, Samuel Prescott Bush, who was selling three quarters of the small munitions to all sides of, of the war and World yeah. War One, you know, this is really the beginning of the industrial complex. So the Bushes are, you know, kind of Johnny come lately. They're not maybe Illuminati, but yeah, they are now, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. Is, so anyway, so there was Kennedy uh, trying to be president and the power structure decided, okay, we're going to take him out. And so how do they do it? Well, they used the knowledge they had of 
trauma-based mind control. Yeah. How do you shell shock an entire nation? Well, they publicly executed the guy. And it was a very shocking experience. Mm -hmm. You and I were there. I mean, we were, you know, of age to remember it, right. affected by it. I was 14. And, uh, yeah, the whole nation was stunned. And, and of course, when that happens, then uh, you kind of go into a dissociative state, which is just what happens, of course, when you're ex exposed to shell shock or post-traumatic stress disorder in a war. And then you can be easily reprogrammed. Sure. When you're in this so dissociative state, then and you can be, then you're more vulnerable to messages, mm -hmm. uh, and you can, you know, the whole system can be moved, and that's why they want to do it. They want to control the whole system. So, but not only that, not only was trauma-based mind control used, as well as lots of Masonic symbolism, apparently in Dealey Plaza, etc. So they're all in this too. Again, this is a satanic thing. Um, uh, electronic weapons probably were used and this came out in a great book called were we controlled by lincoln lawrence in 1967 in which he explained the technologies that the military had then Whoa. 1963 uh radio hypnotic intracerebral control i see the uh, psychologist psychiatrist uh, george estabrooks back in world war ii he was colgate university uh, he was a master at hypnotism and said, I can, pr and, and, and then another psychiatrist building on his work named Milton Klein said, I can make a patsy in three months. I can make a Manchurian candidate assassin in six months through hypnotism. Well, Dr. Alan Frey in 1958 was working on radio uh, signals to the brain of animals mm -hmm. and humans, which could trigger uh, responses. Uh, hypnotic type responses could be triggered and then uh, uh, so whereas the whole trauma-based mind control when when applied to an individual will cause uh, shall we say a splitting of a personality uh, yeah. uh, to to uh, multiple personality disorder dissociative identity disorder uh, this can also be induced uh, especially with somebody who's already split uh, uh, this can be triggered by radio signals Okay, so now we're talking electronic warfare. Yeah. And, and so Lincoln Lawrence is talking about the technology existing at that time, RHIC, and then EDEM, Electronic Dissolution of Memory, which is simply, again, the, 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 right. the loss of time, which, which happens when you, when you get triggered from one personality to the next. So, and not only that, but he says there were all kinds of insider Wall Street deals going on, huge theft going on. So the people that were involved in this operation were profiting from it on Wall Street. So that, again, more, another fingerprint of the real secret government. Okay, so now we fast forward uh, over a bunch of things to 911 and 9-11, and we see the same basic mm -hmm. formula. 9-11 was a trauma-based mind control event sure. for the world. And, of course, was used to, to precipitate not only the, uh, these illegal wars in the Middle East, uh, which, of course, the Pentagon loves because now they've you know, increased their operations. Sure. <laughs> uh, but also this draconian totalitarian police state that we're talking about, which uh, we call it the National Security Establishment now, uh, of which gang stalking is a major component. Okay, so now we have to, this whole global war on terror, we have to go after those boogeymen, those terrorists, you yeah. know, which means now we have, you know, billions of dollars. Department of Homeland Security is, is formed right after 9-11, and uh, now it's $40 billion a year budget, uh, 225,000 people employed, and what's going on with DHS is it's with their fusion centers, more or less the same thing that was operating in Operation Phoenix uh, in Vietnam, which is what they are is their interagency coordinators of all of the players. Now, most of the government agencies are going to have their anti-terrorism units now because they're all on the sure. same program. You've got to coordinate them somehow. The FBI has their Joint Terrorism Task Force as a coordinating agency, and the DHS has their fusion centers, 78 of them, in every state and major city in America. Um, and this coordinates not only the military, not only the intelligence agencies, not only the federal agencies, but also the local cops 
Sure. And vigilante groups, ex-military people, neighborhood watch, etc. So there are cadres of individuals that can be pulled into this program. Some paid half time, some paid full time, and some volunteer because they they're lied to and told that the people we're going to have to go after are are uh, we don't have anything on them yet, but they're suspected. Yeah, and we think that they're, you know, pedophile or whatever, you yeah. know, and then they make up some story. And then the average Joe on the street who may be underemployed. <laughs> right. Says, yeah, I want a new car. I want a new house. Yeah, whatever. You know, uh, I'm, sign me up, you know. Yeah. I'm gonna go after that bad guy, you know. And and this is where the mill experiment comes in. You know, people obeying authority are willing to go off and torture somebody else to death. You know, two-thirds of the people uh, that right. have been tested are willing to do that kind of thing. Okay, this is a real fundamental flaw in human nature, and, and our, our leaders are avoiding that. Um, okay, so 911 also, a PSYOP, also, according to Dr. Judy Wood, was a demonstration of electronic warfare, directed energy weapons, and uh, she's got a great book, Where Did the Towers Go? And Dr. Judy Wood, has a PhD in materials engineering and physics, optical interferometry. She understands how wavelengths of energy work mm -hmm. and how they can be interfered. And when you have these interference of different wavelengths, you can create almost a new physics, from what I understand from reading Colonel mm -hmm. Tom Bearden's work. And in that uh, sphere where you have different wavelengths impinging on upon a, a given area, you can actually cause molecular dissociation, which is a matter flies apart. Right. So what happened is the bu the buildings, the World Trade Center 1 and 2, they didn't really fall. <laughs> they were they were atomized. Right. Yes, they were atomized. Exactly. And it, it, it you know, it's like these two beams were just going right down the building more or less at the speed of gravity, which is, you know, totally impossible yeah. with the strongest buildings that have ever right. been. Right. <laughs> You know, with steel frame and and concrete and glass. So you know, she would say that the buildings went away, uh, and actually they were turned into clay-sized particles, less than one micron in diameter. A micron is a millionth of a meter, and it's officially a clay-sized particle. A lot of it drifted up, and a lot of it came down as dust to the ground. But the the full weight of those buildings did not hit the ground. Uh, uh. If it did, it would have broken the bathtub. Uh, structure which was holding back the Hudson River and the powers that be that would destroy the whole neighborhood. So they had a better solution, which was very, very high tech directed energy weapons. And uh, so that's what was demonstrated on uh, September 11th uh, to the world. And of course, the average person was fooled, and we're still fooled because, you know, architects and engineers come in and say it's uh, controlled demolition. So and so says it's, you know, a mini nuke. So and so says, you know, well, it's jet fuel, and so and so says it's the planes hit. Well, I think the truth is the planes never hit those buildings. Um, that was part of the psyop. Could have been, you know, the, the mm -hmm. images could have been created on somebody's, uh, and were, uh, you know, false video fakery. We're, sure. We're, created, uh, we're, we're, you know, some guy on his uh, station, computer station, could could insert an image of a building of a plane, which is going into an image of though that part of the city created by uh, the technologies that they have. They have these sure. un unmanned aerial vehicles, the drones, that take pictures. And you can you can collate all those pictures and you can get any vantage point uh, digitally. Mm -hmm. Now you can just get that digital image of the neighborhood and insert a plane in it, and uh, there you have it. And that's, of course, what they gave to CNN and Fox News, sure. the main culprits there, actually part of the operation. And then all the other the other networks took that took that and went with it. Oh, this is on my 911.com, 911nwo.com website, if people want to wade through the information, you know. Right. And I think it's important that we do that. Uh, but anyway, so my contention then is, my, my hypothesis is that... Uh, uh, 911, the Kennedy assassination, both uh, instances in which these major covert technologies were utilized. Now, again, these covert technologies, PSYOP and electronic warfare, have been developed from much of the 20th century in top. So much of the work is still classified. 
much of it is declassified. Um, but I think enough is declassified so that we can get a picture of it. Now let's scale that whole thing down to the attack and, and torture with no touch torture weapons of individuals who are not on board with Erica's plan to conquer the world, for instance, such as myself or mm-hmm. others or anybody who is maybe uh, gets on a, a death list or a target list or a you know, terrorist watch list or whatever. And now uh, that whole system of directed energy weapons and PSYOP can be applied to uh, neutralize, shall we say, uh, or exterminate, shall we say, or eradicate or eliminate or incapacitate or whatever, uh, civilians. Uh, and uh, of course, this is part of the takedown program because that can be that can be done to a politician. That can be done to sure. you know Joe Blow on the street. It can be done to any person who is you know they want a target. So okay. I, I'm going to stop there <laughs> and let you jump in. But if if you don't mind, I've I've got to, I'd like to kind of focus mostly on psyop this time uh, because again, this very specific uh, structure that the military has in their documents and that no doubt that they have in your neighborhood and we need to know especially we targets need to know what structure how are they are doing it to us yes because it, if you're a ti on the ground all you know is things are very weird and people are very mean and you know you get battle swarmed you get swarms of people coming in to do these these psyop tricks these gang stalking street theater things, you know, gaslighting, etc. Right. Uh, and you don't know what's going on. So many, many people will succumb psychologically, right. as they're supposed to, because they've been profiled by teams of psychologists right. who've been to your neighborhood and profiled you. And they know how, you know, the most uh, effective way to do this is. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop there and then we hopefully get back to PSYOPs more, more specifically. Well, I don't have too many questions. I just want to bring it to everybody's attention that... These things were going on during the Vietnam War in Operation Phoenix, and we didn't object. I mean, they've, they've been written about, and yeah, that's fine if you use it over there. But now they're using it here. They're using it on our best and brightest. And it's, it's horrible. It's torture in place. Uh, they fry the organs of people while they're living. Uh, and then collect the doctor's reports. No, it's, it's a very horrible program that's on here. And it's so pervasive, uh, the people that are involved that are being tortured, and also the people that are torturing. I know we talked to Ramola D this week, and she talked about her neighbors. They recruited her neighborhood. They recruited her neighbors. They moved people in close to her. They situated weapons across the street from her. They surveil her with, I mean, it's the amount of people that are seduced into participating in this program is overwhelming. But I don't want to get off of the, uh, the actual weapons that they're using because I think we really need to know about, about this. Thanks, Dr. Eric. You're doing a wonderful yeah. thing. You're doing a wonderful thing because, honestly, it's outside the purview of the average citizen to be able to wade through these books, condense this information, and then regurgitate it. Uh, so you're doing yeah. us all a wonderful favor. Well, thank you. And, and I, you know, I would, uh, you know, I would be, be quick to say that this is other people's research that right. I am summarizing. And I'm quick to give them credit for it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's information we all need. Uh, but the point is that the information can be accessed and to defend ourselves and uh, to defend each other. Yeah. I mean, both of us now have talked to Ramola D. as she lives in Boston. She's an ex, uh, I think, uh, English professor and a poet uh, who taught at Georgetown uh, University in Washington D.C. I mean, she's a, uh, you know, she's a very creative and energetic uh, person. And uh, you know, our government is torturing her. Yeah. Uh, and she'll obviously she, you you haven't done a just a recent interview with her and then Dr. Catherine Horton is the equivalent really, yes. in, in uh, PhD at Oxford and <laughs> physics uh, right uh, who was working at CERN uh, she's also in the same boat I mean being hit by these electronic weapons well I mean at some point silence is complicity <laughs> if, if you are the American population and you're letting the government get away with this well you know 
bad on you. You know, you, this is this is more bad karma. Right. You know, we we're in the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence say, you know, that you know we have inalienable God-given rights as right. citizens, and we create governments to guarantee our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And when governments become destructive of those ends, it's our job, our responsibility to to alter or abolish those governments. And you know what Donald Trump said at his uh, at his uh, uh, acceptance speech for the Republican National uh, uh, Committee there, uh, Congress. Uh, he said, uh, you know, it, it's the it's the duty of governments to protect their citizens, and any government that fails to do that, you know, is not worthy of governing. Well, right. I'm sure what he's talking about is, is the Islamic terrorists that is this guy. And the Brits and the Germans have have uh, have fomented over the years to use as a as a weapon against uh, in this whole global war on terror. That's that story is told in F. William Ingdahl's recent book called uh, "The Lost Hegemon." Now, then you can learn about you know the, the history of, of the use of Islamic terrorism to uh, you know to be the boogie guy. But yeah. anyway, so let's just go back to uh, to to Mark Rich here, and I and I'll just make this uh, kind of general statement, and then we'll get into the specifics. Here's what Rich says. Front groups for the British Crown and Wall Street are actively pursuing plans for global domination. Aggressive efforts are now underway to remove existing freedoms. As they consolidate control of the planet, they have extended the battlefield into your neighborhoods. Their primary enemies are those resisting their political agenda, all of whom will be identified, isolated, and destroyed. Mm -hmm. And include Inclusion of the pathological factor, however, suggests that a more general class of people who are considered their natural enemies will be attacked as well. Evidence suggests that the U.S. government has been entirely overthrown by a network of groups exhibiting psychopathic traits that have disguised themselves using humanitarian fronts. They are facilitating a revolution which will result in them having control of the entire planet. Using the multi multinational for waging a worldwide war against civilians to accomplish this. Okay, but not exactly fair. We're going to take all the power, levers of power, and we're going to now use it against individuals. You know, right. not exactly a fair fight. So these guys are cowards and, and uh, psychopaths. In order, to, um, in order to maintain a dictatorship, it is absolutely on level. In the U.S., this network has existed since 1917, World War One, when the U.S. Army was targeting and people to target people who were considered subversive and not on board with the plan for World War One, and has been used to harass and spy on people that have been labeled subversive. It is now entirely fused into our society, just as it was in East Germany under the Stasi and Communist Russia under the KGB and the Cheka. It is no exaggeration to say that the Anglo-American establishment is using the military to reach down into your neighborhoods, single people out, and silently torture them while using the mental health system, Congress, media, and non-governmental organizations, NGOs, to conceal their attacks. So this is another conversation we have to have, is how, is how the, the, this, the whole system that protects the power system and says the target is crazy. And by the way, let's get them institutionalized as fast as we can or else lock up in jail and throw away the key. Right. Okay, their utopia, as in, you know, the, the psychopaths, their utopia is only possible when the enemy is removed. A portion of the population is recruited to assist in accomplishing that. Directed energy weapons, including microwaves, lasers, and acoustic frequencies, will be used on the enemy. PSYOP attacks are transmitted through every possible channel of communication that the TA targeted audience uses. Remember last time in our conversation I said, uh, you know, the answer my friend is in the alphabet soup. Yeah. Uh, you know, the answer my friend is in the acronym, uh, you know, kind of like uh, Bob Dylan's yeah. answer my friend is blown in the wind. It's in the alphabet soup. It's in the documents of, of our military and, and the CFR, et cetera. TA means targeted on the audience and that includes targeted individuals. It would be the ultimate dream for any average psychopath to be able to use the resources of the state to place people under surveillance, torture them from a safe distance with weapons that leave no evidence of their use, non-touch yeah. torture, silent kill, soft kill, slow kill, non-lethal weapons, 
and sit back and have a good laugh while they watch them suffer in real time. And remember, George Bush and Dick Cheney were watching the sodomy that was going on in Abu Ghraib by our military and intelligence people against Iraqi children. Yeah. They get off on this stuff. These guys are, you know, I, I don't know how you torture them adequately. I mean, punish them adequately. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean to use the word torture there, but it seems like that would be deserved. This, this is where, the, right, this is where pedophilia and yeah. gang stalking and isometric warfare overlap. They're the same thing. They're sources of power. When they um, torture you, they're getting off. They're getting power from that. Right. And that's the satanic element. That's so right. this is a diabolical system, and, and you and I have talked about that, and uh, I'm glad that we're kind of on the same page on that. So that's where these things connect. You know, this is where this is where it connects with Pizzagate. Uh -huh. This is where it connects with the Hampstead uh, Absolutely. case, Absolutely. Okay, so... Um, it would be even better if they controlled the very institutions which proclaim to exist to expose such activities, like the ACLU or Amnesty International, etc. Okay, their widespread, systematic, consistent, vile activities, which have spanned multiple realms over the course of decades and have been committed against the human race in general, would be considered a crime against humanity in any civilization run by decent people. <laughs> Love right. that comment. They're run by decent people. Oh, well, we don't have a civilization run by decent people. No, we anymore. don't. We have a civilization run by psychopaths. That's and, right. You know, we've talked about a little, a little bit about that. This 4% of the population are considered psychopaths. They have no conscience. They are almost like a different species. They mimic us in our responses. Right. But their goal is control and power, and they get off on this stuff, like you say, you know. And, of course, many of them will be in inter intergenerational satanic families. Right. They would have been sodomized as children for, you know, just with their personality so they could be good soldiers in the intergenerational war for Satan to take over the world. So, you know, I don't know if that affords them any excuse, but... Uh, in a way it does, and in a way it doesn't, you know. But but that's the reality, I think, of right. the system. We're the ones, I think we're the ones that need the excuse right now. I think the way, let me give you some insight. I think that there's psychopaths at the top. They're prize psychopaths. And, of course, what would keep a psychopath from becoming a Satanist? That's a source of power. So you've got psychopaths, and then they can create parapsychopaths, which we have all over corporations. And then we have a psychopathic society where we're taught to prize people with money no matter how they got it. I mean, the people that are torturing Ramallah D right now, normal individuals living in a psychopathic society being bought off by the psychopaths to torture her. So just, just to show you, there's not just a few of them, the full 1% to 4% psychopaths. They're, they're in a structure that allows them to have a lot more power than, than, than God intended, I'm sure. And that is a very good point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, well, so what we're talking about here is, is what the military calls fourth generation warfare, yeah. 4GW. It's a form of political and information warfare and psychological warfare, much like the worldview warfare of the Nazis, which uses the scientific application of uh, propaganda and terror to control populations. Okay, PSYOPs, that's what it yeah. is. And again, much of this research in PSYOPs, according to Rich, is still classified. It was carried out in previous decades, even the early part of the 20th century, by foundations such as the Rockefeller, Carnegie, Ford foundations, and, you know, the CFR and things like that. And uh, so these, this is the power behind the power. This is the power behind our military and our government. Mm -hmm. These are the private sector psychopath players that you know are so interested in these these revolutionary methods for political control. So again, this is a civilian military operation, which is going to target civilian adversaries, uh, domestic state enemies. They're called insurgents, extremists, non-state actors, cells of fanatics, citizen terrorists, yeah. anybody who might be, say, uh, valuing the Constitution or, you know, national sovereignty, right. or homeschooling their kids, or maybe they're Christians, because this particular group virulently hates uh, Christian society. In fact, a lot of Christians now have written books about this and say, well, we are being targeted. Right. You know? 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, they're starting to wake up, at least some of them. Yeah. But then you've got all the, you know, neocon Catholics and evangelicals, you know, who are not waking up. They're totally right. part of the propaganda system. So anyway, the goal of this new world war is psychological collapse of these new enemies uh, to erode their will, to destroy their will, to decompose them, to use the uh, East German Stasi uh, term that they used, uh, Zersetzung, um, deprive them, uh, degrade them, all these D words, uh, deny, degrade, you find this in the, in the uh, documents of the military. A lot of the psychological jargon gets into the military documents, and this is where Rich's book is very, uh -huh. very solid. Um, so now we're going to use, now they're going to use the synchronized use of these non lethal directed energy weapons, along with the PSYOP, which includes isolation, deprivation uh, of individuals uh, in, in, in formulaic ways. So once we get all the profile of a lot of these TA, TIs, targeted individuals, we will see the commonality of this program being used all over the, the world. We will see that, oh, hey, this is real. These people are not crazy. These people are going under, undergoing what, what, what somebody right. in Russia or the Balkans or whatever is undergoing. Okay, so now let's look at, uh, again, the terms unconventional warfare, asymmetrical warfare, uh, Low intensity conflict, military operations other than war, irregular warfare. These are used almost synonymously in these military documents. But basically, it's civilian military operations, CMO. Uh, and the genius, again, of Rich's book, he's pulling together articles uh, 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 from Army War College documents and, and CFR and RAND Corporation and stuff like this, all talking about uh, you know how non-lethal weapons are going to be mm -hmm. used in feature conflict and blah, blah, blah. You know, and quoting the, the people involved. Um, so, again, we don't have to, you know, be, you know, we don't have to uh, worry about... Uh, whether this stuff is real. I mean, it's, it's in their documents. This is military doctrine now. Now let's look at some of the how they do it kind of thing. Uh, again, this goes back to the alphabet soup. In the military documents, C4ISR stands for Command, Control, Communications, Computer Center. C4ISR. Uh, and then ISR is Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance. Uh, this now includes multiple interacting components uh, in the battle space, which can monitor and understand and respond to uh, and manage the battle space uh, environment with information systems in which you have a command and control set up where a local leader, who can be somewhere else, it can be a virtual uh, command, it can be all done with computers, and he's now communicating with all the nodes out there, and they use that term nodes, communicating with them so that they will say battle swarm, the targeted individual, um, oh. and each one of them separately gets a command to say this or to do that or to wear this color shirt or to drive by in this color car at a certain time so that uh, the harassing, the torturing, would not be visible to other people but the targeted individual would have been sensitized to the fact that they are being targeted and they're trying to respond. What in the world's right. going on here? So these C4 ISR centers can be mobile, they can be stationary, they can be virtual, they can be computer-based, and they are in your neighborhood. This is how they do it. Uh, so each military service has its own tactical mobile C4 ISR system. The Navy and the Marines use ForceNet. The Air Force uses Command Control Constellation, or C2 Constellation. The Army uses Land Warden Net and Win slash T. Uh, and each of these now is connected to a GIG Global Information Grid, which can locate the target anywhere within a foot on the planet. And Mark Rich talks about each target now has an electric dome over him. Well, <laughs> that's a kind of a... A way to put it. Uh, the bottom line is they they have figured out how to uh, read the electroencephalographic EEG uh, output of each individual mind. They've mapped the mind to the point where they can distinguish one mind from the next. They call it remote neural monitoring, and and Ramola D is very all on top of this and understands it. 
Uh, I'm still coming to grips with it, but uh, and this all goes back to research that this, you know, out of MK Ultra, see, you know, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, um, when they when they were learning uh, all these different techniques, chemical, biological, and electronic, for mind control. And this is one of the you know 149 MK Ultra subprojects, the electronic program. I think it's subproject 119, which then became the basis for all these electronic. Uh, uh, mind control things, which you know, got into Jose Delgado and the stimo receiver, and he's able to stop the charging bull, you know, yeah. pushing a button, which you know, uh, was able to affect the the cerebral cortex of this charging bull, and and you know, they figured out which wavelengths and frequencies of energy will uh, cause what kind of moods, and which will cause stress and anxiety, and this these by the way, these kinds of directed energy weapons were tested and used in the 1991 Iraq war in which uh, a whole you know battalions of Iraqis just you know dropped their weapons because they were targeted with these frequencies which gave them extreme hopelessness and right. anxiety and so you know you got uh, I don't know how many people I don't know 25,000 Iraqis just putting down their weapons and you know, right. crying or whatever you know and obviously they're you know, you can take 50 American guys and come in and win the battle, you know, because they've, they've tested it now on, on the enemy. And, of course, that's one of the, for the, for the military, that's why they always have to have these wars, because then they can sure. always test their new technology. And then the corporations, Raytheon, et cetera, you know, they're actually providing the high-tech stuff. So, again, we're going back to the military-industrial complex sure. where, you know, and now based on uh, executive order 12333 under Ronald Reagan in the 80s. Um, not only was all the COINTELPRO, uh, the FBI's counterintelligence program operations legalized, but now the military agencies and intelligence agencies could outsource the actual operations to American corporations, you know, yeah. such as... Um, IDS. Uh, Orbis, I think it's called Orbis, IDS. There's a bunch of those. Uh, Black little water, corporate. Et Blackwater. You know, all of these things are run by ex, ex uh, intelligence people. You know, InfraGuard uh, is doing a lot of this stuff, and it's it's run by an ex FBI guy. You know, so right. they get trained in the military or intelligence or both. Then they retire early with a pretty sweet retirement, and then they jump into positions. Uh, you know, which right. pay them two or three or four, five, six. Right. I don't know how many times more. Uh, for the private sector and do the same thing. So if you are being targeted, like say Dr. John Hall and and uh, the people he knows in San Antonio, Texas, chances are it might not be the FBI. It might be InfraGuard that's organizing right. with these technologies. But then the military will share the technology with InfraGuard. But anyway, these 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 control systems are you know coming out of U.S. military and intelligence and then and then opened up to uh, cadres of other groups. Okay, so let's look at some more of these uh, uh, support systems. The CMOC, the Civilian Military Operations Center, is established in the civilian sector for exchanging ideas. It may be a physical meeting place or a virtual one through online networks, and you can, they can have daily meetings attended by representatives of the military, the non-governmental organizations, the private sector, and local officials. Okay, so now you've got the whole society, in effect, coordinating their activities to target these that bad guys, you know, yeah. these insurgents, these terrorists, these professors, right. you know, who are doing nothing more than, you know, trying to understand the world around them and, and alert their neighbors. Uh, so discussions at these meetings may include any ongoing campaigns against domestic threats, in the AO area of operation, which is the battle space, which is your neighborhood. Um, in addition, according to Rich, and I'm quoting him directly uh, mm -hmm. throughout here, in addition to using the civilian population and private sector, the military will temporarily take over the functions of the local government, you know, your county commissioners, to address these threats. These takeovers have been described as comprehensive use of intergovernmental, regional, national, local government, non-governmental, and private sector organizations. These takeovers may be performed in the absence of any other military activity. In other words, your hometown. This yeah. may be done in times of peace and may not necessarily include a visible military presence. The operations may be performed by designated civil affairs units 
military forces, or a combination. And I can tell you for sure, having attended the local uh, uh, county commissioner's meeting in little old tiny Sawatch County, Colorado, where I live, that, you know, there's one of the three county commissioners who every month meets with Homeland Security. And Homeland Department of Homeland Security will float grants to our little county and say, you know, here's, uh, here's enough money, $50,000, let's say, for this small county to have a SWAT team and to, you know, now coordinate surveillance of the domestic enemy, you know, which, you know, I think is me. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> okay, so let me go on with what Rich says here. After dealing with irregular threats, the military hands back control of the organization back to its managers. During the occupation, the tactics used against irregular threats may include civic actions, use of civilian force, and or arms, civilian military effort to remove the influence that an adversary has on a population. So again, deprivation is used, isolation, sleep deprivation, us. Eric, you have to go back yeah. and uh, list those things again because we cut out a little bit. Okay. List the things that they well, can use. Yeah, I mean, this this includes, uh, uh, um, they're yeah. really big on deprivation, uh, sleep deprivation, social deprivation, all the rumor campaigns that they carry on, and this is in Rich's book, that's part of the defamation phase. Remember, uh, Dr. John Hall identified six phases of targeting. First, selection, then surveillance, which includes lots of these electronic uh, right. weapons, by the way. And, and then the actual uh, stalking phase, which includes the PSYOP. And that is simultaneous with the defamation phase, which is, you know, the rumor campaigns that your local operatives right. will, will conduct. Uh, in order to discredit and defame the individual and get people on board with your targeting. And then the actual attack phase, which is um, weapons, and the downstream phase, uh, in which, you know, local spies and others, you know, and the, and the, the whole complex is monitor your response. So this is the scientific, you might say, methodology, and then they have an almost infinite bag of, of tricks. Okay, well, let's go on with the actual structure of this. You have your civilian military cooperation centers, capital C I M I C S. The answer, my friend, is in the acronyms yeah. and the uh, alphabet soup. Uh, and uh, so, this is uh, these are in fact a kind of C4 ISR center. What NATO calls C M O C S. They are located in the civilian sector, and they may be in more than and there may be more than one in a city. These centers are connected again to the geographic information grid, the GIG. Uh, they have daily meetings again between representatives of the military, the NGOs, the IGOs, the intergovernmental operations, the private sector business, the civilian leaders, and local, local officials and government agencies. Again, all this mimics what the CIA did in Operation Phoenix at their many uh, coordinating centers. They had regional provincial uh, interrogation centers. Uh, and then they had uh, the state uh, interrogation centers, which eventually, of course, became torture centers. So all of this then is, is ready to morph into, you know, torture. Well, it is torture. It is torture. But, uh, yeah, it is torture. This is invisible torture. Uh, the CMICs or the CMOCs receive and validate information regarding domestic threats in the AO area of operation. It then forwards the request to the local CM the civilian military force for action. The CMOC coordinates the activities of the civilian military forces at the tactical level and is in constant contact with these forces. Okay, then there's the covert vigilante network. This is the, you know, the ex-cops and the ex-military and the neighborhood watch people. This is also the hidden political subculture. It's a nationwide citizen informant network that, like I said, we've had in the United States some form of this since 1917. This silently and secretly spies upon and harasses targeted individuals, TI. And it works with federal agencies, local law enforcement, and the DOJ. Now, see, the difference between a TI like myself and maybe, you know, another neighbor I have in Crestone is I'm now completely aware of these things because I see their activities, because their activities impinge upon right. my life directly. And, you know, if I were to sit down and take, you know, a month, I could 
right up from memory a lot of very strange experiences. And when things settle, maybe I'll do that, you know. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but anyway, uh, one of the techniques, uh, one of the tactics, uh, excuse me, one of the technologies they have is called capital CR, cognitive radio, which is a kind of JTRC or joint tactical radio system that consists of a computer which has artificial intelligence, AI. CR is an intelligent device that is aware of itself, the needs of the user, and the environment. It can understand and learn. Okay, now we're in the, the movie 2001 with Hal, right. you know, the smart computer that now is going to beat you. Uh, DARPA, the Defense Advanced uh, Research Project uh, Agency, an adjunct to the military, helped create CRs, cognitive radios, through programs like Adaptive Cognition Enhanced Radio Teams, ACERT, capital A-C-E-R-T, and situation-aware protocols in edge network technologies, SAPIENT, capital S-A-P-I-E-N-T, situation-aware protocols in edge network technologies. Like I say, the answer is in the alphabet soup. Yeah. Um, so these digital, digital radios, uh, you know, interface with computers, and now we're getting the how. And another... Uh, Let's, let me just move on a little bit about the global information grid, the GIG, which all of these CISR mobile command and control centers would be connected to. This is developed by a major proportion. It has been called the D, C4 ISR unit for net war, that is to say computer operations. It can quickly track down an adversary target anywhere on Earth and attack them by a DEW, Directed Energy Weapons, and other forms of electronic war for work W. GIG uses existing commercial satellite and ground-based systems, such as Gwen Towers, as well as GIG nodes, such as aircraft, vehicles, and ships, equipped with DR, digital radios. GIG is connected to all communication systems used by coalition and allied forces. Okay, now we got a world war this 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 schema this this structure which now involves all these different elements can be applied anywhere on earth uh for what they call the gwot the global war on terror uh which not only uses this fourth generation warfare but also uses the second and third generation warfare as well so you know this is what the military has been doing since world war ii you know we've been giving right. them you know the lion's share of the of our tax money uh you know since you know, since this guy said, these are information operations, I.O., also known as cyber war, and network set there, or net war, and see, and they are all command. We're, we're breaking up, we're breaking up again. Uh, I don't know where to go back to, maybe just summarize what you said the last couple minutes, because we're breaking up. Yeah, well, all of this, again, is part of the, can you hear me now, Paul? Yeah, you're good, you're good now. Okay, this is the GWOT, the Global War on Terror. Global War. Which uses second, third, and fourth generation warfare. What we're talking about now is fourth generation warfare, this covert stuff. Um, it is also known as an information operation or information operations, I.O. And it's also called in military documents, cyber warfare, network-centric warfare, NCW, net war, and also command and control warfare. So again, We've, we, we lost you when you said command and control warfare. And let me just read you the definitions from the DOD. Okay. Uh, uh, about information operations. And again, this is where Rich's book is so good because he gives you the quotes out of their own documents. This is from the DOD, Department of Defense. The integrated employment of the core capabilities of electronic warfare, computer network operations, psychological operations, military deception, and operations security in concert with specific supporting and related capabilities in, uh, to influence, disrupt, corrupt, or usurp adversarial human and automated decision-making while protecting our own. Okay, see, you know, this is all military doctrine. This is what they do. This is how they do it. Um, what makes this new type of warfare different, says the DOD, it is the focus on its operations, which is, <laughs> the focus is on the relevant population, 
as well as its purpose, which is to gain or maintain control or influence over and support of that relevant population. So the focus is on the legitimacy of political authority to control or influence a population. This is why what we're doing is information warfare. This is why they would regard me as an adversary, mm -hmm. because my narrative of what's going on in the world completely undermines theirs. Yes. They, they, they have to have the public perception of legitimacy, you know, which is that we're the good guys. Yeah. And uh, what the military does in the world is good. Uh, and that, actually, they enjoy that privilege in America. They, the propaganda system is so powerful that uh, we think the military is the good guys. Even though, you know, they've been killing millions and millions right. and millions, tens of millions of people around the world. And now they're killing thousands and thousands by slow torture uh, uh, in America. Uh, and certainly probably millions in the world and yet they they must maintain the image of, of being legitimate the military has written papers about we don't really care about being legitimate we care about the perception of legitimacy yes. so it's our job to to undermine that to disprove that and show that these people are in violation of the u.s constitution not only are they are usurping and violating our constitutional rights they are killing us in complete violation of what our government is is there for. You know, right. I mean, all of our military and political people would take an, uh, an oath on the Bible to protect and defend the U.S. Constitution, and the perception is they're protecting and defending the American people. Nothing could be further from the case. They are they are destroying the Constitution, and they are destroying the American people. They've con turned the guns in on us. But the guns are PSYOP and electronic warfare. We can't see them. So this is where you know, we have to know what's going on. Exactly. Which is where eyes like me and you come in handy, I think, because uh, we can help educate people about this. Um, well, I think they should know that 70% uh, of the targets are women. And what they do up front is they take away their support system. They take away their husband. They take away their friends. And they leave them destitute. And then they hit them with this, this warfare. It's really ugly. If you've looked at some of these other interviews we've done, it's horrible. Yeah, they're sophisticated warfare. But I think the, the key that you said earlier, uh, Dr. Kallstrom, is silence is complicity. If you're listening to this broadcast and you've followed along on this series and you've listened to our other interviews, your silence is complicity now. You've got to say something. You've got to do something. Uh, they can't uh, control a population no matter what technology they have if the population knows that the enemy is the army, if the enemy is the CIA, the enemy are these, are these black... Um, organizations that are controlled by, I'm going to go out and say it, there's a satanic element of the, in the top level of this that runs the pedophiles, that, do, that does the spirit cooking. They are, they are involved. And if you're working for that side, you're working for those people. You're on the wrong side of the, of the, of the fence on this, on this battle. And I would suggest that you, that you stop just listening and you spread this around. You put this on Facebook. You let people realize what's going on. If you listen to the people that we've interviewed down through the, down through the months, and you've listened to Dr. Kallstrom's uh, deep, deep research on this subject, you know what's going on. You know the reality of what's going on. You can't sit there anymore. Legal doesn't mean it's lawful. So... Uh, I want to, uh, I just want to encourage people to do something because this is not going to stop by itself. Thank you. Absolutely not. This is a world takedown project. And, uh, um, you know, as we've mentioned earlier, this is a weapon system that can be scaled up or down. Uh, and uh, according to Marshall Thomas, who wrote a great book called, uh, which we talked about last time, called The uh, monarch the new phoenix program he's saying that you know once this weapon system is fully developed it's going to be used on the civilian population of the world uh and uh, 
uh, Cynthia McKinney, who I've got one of her, uh, she's a ex military intelligence who's been a target for mm-hmm. decades. Ooh. Um, she's, she's saying, uh, this is going to be used for a mass genocide. Uh, this is going to use, be used for a mass genocide of the world's civilian population. So in a way, Ramola D, Eric Carlstrom, Catherine Horton, and the other targeted individuals are standing in be- between the, the powers that be, who are the psychopaths, and right. the domestic population of the world, which, you know, is claimed we're, we're the, the top of the nail. <laughs> right. <laughs> pounded on. But, you know, we're trying to spread the words uh, again so that it, the, you know, the, the, the world, uh, the New World Order does not get completed as our satanic over, overlords, uh, uh, or would be overlords, uh, envision. Now, here's a statement that Mark Rich used. He, he states that terrorism will be used by the MNF, multinational force, mm-hmm. if necessary. Terrorism an act, is an act of violence against a civilian population to achieve a political objective. This means a HN host nation government, including the U.S., will carry out large-scale acts of violence against its own population to achieve political objectives. Okay, do you need anything more explicit than that? I mean, this is what's behind Operation 9-11 and the host of, you know, shootings and killings. Uh, All of this stuff is is to manipulate the population through trauma-based mind control and to justify, of course. Now, actually, this is where the the mind control gets gets so strong. Remember in, in 1984, uh, which, of course, is all happening now before our eyes, where the character Winston Smith is being tortured by uh, uh, this character O'Brien, who, you know, has him down on the table strapped there, you know, with electrodes to his head or whatever. And Winston Smith says, OK, uh, two and two equals what? And Winston Smith says four. And, and then O'Brien zaps him, you know, so shaking all over. He says, OK, now, what is two, uh, what is two and two equal? And Winston Smith says anything you want, you know. Says, right. well, I don't care, you know. Stop, right. stop torturing me. So the whole point, I think, is to is to ensure that the population uh, has this double think capability, which Jesus called the double mind. A double minded man mm-hmm. is unstable in, in all his ways, says the Book of James. In other words, you have to be willing to to admit so that you can be controlled by the government, you know, that Osama bin Laden did 9-11 and that humans are causing global warming or any of a host of the lies that were Mm -hmm. were fed, you know. And uh, in other words, to to engage in this double thing, to to hold in your brain two completely irreconcilable ideas at the same time and believe them both. Right. In other words, you have to give up your critical abilities. Right. Uh, because then you become a docile slave in the empire. You know, then you were, you know, you're where they want them. And of course, what happens to Winston Smith is once he finally loves Big Brother, you know, then he's killed. <laughs> you know? Right. So, but they had to make sure that the mind control was uh, was accomplished first. So, but the, the point is to kill the the the, the civilian right. population. So, you know, don't be warm and fuzzy about our our leaders. They they are psychopaths. Uh, they do and get off on this stuff. A few more terms here. Uh, M-A-N-E-T, capital M-A-N-E-T is the mobile ad hoc network. It's a wireless, and again, all this this wireless electronic warfare all goes back to Tesla technology, which, you know, he was working on this stuff in the late 1800s. And uh, the 1900s, uh, he's the one who said... uh, He's the one who wanted to, with J.P. Morgan's funding, wanted to build the Wardenclyffe Tower in Manhattan, which would uh, wirelessly project free energy right. to the, the world. We're talking free energy now. Yeah. And uh, J.P. Morgan cut the funding because he said, uh, hey, if it's free, uh, you know, where can I put a meter? Right. And, uh, you know, I can't get rich off of this. So, you know, yeah. there it goes. And they actually tore down the Wardenclyffe facility. So, and this is what Dr. Judy Wood concludes in her book. She's saying what was demonstrated on 9-11 was the most destructive uh, weapon system in the world and the potential for free energy to to the entire world. Now, of course, if we have free energy to the people of Lower Slobovia or wherever, the the poorest part of the world, like Haiti, those people are going to, those people are going to thrive, you know. Right. And now all of a sudden there goes the class distinction. 
Right. Which, of course, in 1984, the whole thing is about cementing class relations. That's so right. that the upper class will hold its position forever over mm-hmm. the middle and lower classes. So what they want to do is destroy the middle class, put everybody in the lower class, and then kill them. <laughs> That's it, basically, and depopulate the world. Right. Uh, but if you give out free energy, then all of a sudden the 7 billion people of the world have a, have a, have a chance. And those people in Haiti, it's going to turn out, are going to be pretty smart. And, you know, some of those Haitians are going to be just as smart as any of those Rothschilds and royal family of England, uh, maybe smarter. Right. You know, you see it in Mexico, you know. Um, people are smart down here, you know. If, if, they're, if the, But then, you know, Orwell Bobal's term is, you know, if you want to look at a picture of the future, imagine a boot stomping on a human face right. forever. Well, that's what this program is, is a boot stomping on a human face forever. You know? Right. So that's what we have to expose and dismantle it. I think that's very true. Right Right now, Haiti is just a farm for uh, children. All the orphanages in Haiti, they're bringing them over. Uh, uh, incidentally, 33 at a time, which is significant. But uh, it's interesting that you mentioned Haiti. Go yeah, ahead, Doug. Well, it's the poorest country in this, in this hemisphere, yeah. you know. And, uh, I think Guatemala, you know, would be next, you know. And these, it's poorest because it's been assaulted over and over again sure. by, by the U.S. Uh, government one way or the other. Now, now including directed energy, uh, like HARP earthquakes, uh, you know, right. and the big Haiti earthquake, etc. We now have uh, the, the uh, covert uh, weather warfare. Uh, and, and in my naturalclimatechange.org website, I expose uh, the man-caused global warming fraud as, as perhaps uh, one of the things it does is forms as a uh, cover story for what really has been going on, which is weather warfare, weather modification, and geoengineering, right. uh, which again is, again, militarized. Okay, let me go through some more terms here out of, out of rich. Great. More, more acronyms, more, uh, uh, more alphabet soup. The SIAF, Small Independent Action Force, also known as 4GW Forces, is a small, dispersed, agile force with little or no reliance on centralized logistics. They hunt down and neutralize a nation's irregular threats using PSYOP and directed energy weapons. William Lind, in his Modern War Symposium articles, including The Changing Face of War into the Fourth Generation, which I think came out in 1989, advocates formation of a global volunteer citizen militia not under control of federal governments that would maintain domestic order. So what they really want is a self-policing fascist state State, where some citizens are just going to kill all the bad actors or the people they just just designate as bad actors. Yeah, you know, it takes the... Takes the, it takes the responsibility off them. The government, yeah. So the most important 4GW function then would be neighborhood watch. You know, and right after 9-11, uh, we had got these neighborhood watch signs all over Crestone, you know, with a big eye on them. You know? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let me go through a couple more terms. Again, sure. a lot of military documents. documents. TMN slash DR, Tactical Mobile Networks slash Digital Radios. Include MANET, which is a mobile ad hoc network, based on the MESH network standard, developed by DARPA, the U.S. Army, and the Office of Naval Research, ONR. Each node contains wireless routers and omnidirectional antennas and can send and receive data. Mobile nodes create mobile MESH network with each other, and nodes would be all the perpetrators in your neighborhood that can be brought to bear. Each node can move independently. So, you know, if you look back at the CIA, how did the cryptocracy is what it's called, and well, it's called some parts book, Operation Eric, Eric, when you said CIA, something happened to the Internet. Something happened to the, something happened yeah. to the Skype. So, so repeat it. Yeah, the way the CIA has maintained its edge is their control of secrecy and communication. They have the best communication facilities. They have the most top secret technology, and they keep secrets. And, of course, this whole template then now has moved into your neighborhood with these tactical mobile networks and digital radios, et cetera. Now they have that secrecy and those communication abilities right in your neighborhood, and you don't know about it. If you're a perpetrator, you might be a node in their system who gets their marching orders, you know, go to such and such a place and such and such a time and say such a thing, such and such a thing to such and such a person. 
and then you get your, you know, whatever it is, free motorcycle or new car. Yeah, or, whatever. You know, five hundred dollars or whatever. So you know, this is this is how it's done. It's very hierarchical. It's a command and control system, and it's got the highest technology, most secret stuff, and best communication. Okay, so let's go through a couple more of the uh, uh, actual alphabet soup terms here. Uh, the JTTF, the Terrorism Task Force. And this is the FBI. Uh, partnership between various local, state, and federal agencies and private organizations charged with taking action against terrorism. By the way, do you know what your chances are of being killed by a terrorist in the world? One in 20 million. <laughs> Statistically, one in 20 million, which is way less than, you know, getting killed by a bee sting. And in fact, it's about the same probability of getting killed by your television set or another piece of furniture in your living room. <laughs> so for them to sell this phony war on terrorism, we have to be pretty dissociated and stupid. Don't yes, we? We have yes, to, we do. That double think capability. This whole global war on terrorism is just one of the biggest frauds ever. But of course, it's well funded now. Um, <laughs> So taking action against terrorism, which includes the investigation of crimes, you know, identity theft and wire fraud. Okay, there's something legitimate. The agencies that JTF comprises includes the FBI, the DHS, the Coast Guard, the Immigration and Customs, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the Transportation Security Administration, the U.S. Secret Service. The U.S. Armed Forces, the Department of State, uh, the Department of Justice, the Diplomatic Security Service, in other words, all the federal agencies, you know, probably the post office for all I know, and, yeah. and, the, uh, and the Forest Service, you know, I mean, they, you know, in fact, the Forest Service up in the Northwest, uh, the, uh, uh, has, a, uh, there is a plan by the Forest Service to do a testing of uh, directed energy weapons on the forest up there. So, <laughs> so. You know, every federal agency is now, you know, forced to be on board with this. Right. Thing. Let's see if I can find some more terms. Uh, what I wanted to get to here, uh, Paul, is, uh, okay, the, the, the psychological assessment team, the POAT, uh, an example of this uh, would uh, be the POTF, the PSYOP Task Force, is usually the highest organization that performs PSYOP in the battle space. It may be part of a Joint Psychological Operations Task Force, JPOTF, if other services or agencies are included. It plans, develops, designs, produces, and distributes, distributes PSYOP products. See all the jargon here, you know, it's like, you know, a kid people is full of edge, you know, so it's all these other terms that make it sound legitimate. This includes communicate these PSYOP products to the TA target audience. Uh, they do use various media, they use themes, they use messages to the target audience. Um, provides an in-depth profile of the TAs in an AO area of operation. Recommends products to influence the TA target audience, and then it evaluates their effect. So SOCOM, the Special Operations Command, is usually the supporting command structure of a POTF PSYOP task force. SOCOM, it turns out, is fairly recent, established in 1987, the United States Special Operations Command, a unified special operations that oversees special operations groups of the Army, Navy, Marines, and Air Force, headquartered in McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida. SOCOM conducts global overt and covert missions Remember now in 134 nations doing their, you know, dirty work, uh, including unconventional warfare, blah, blah, blah. It has multiple units of Special Operations Forces, SOF, including the first Special, uh, special Warfare Development Group, DEVGRU, the Navy SEALs. SOCOM is support, uh, supported by an in intelligence faction known as the Intelligence Support Activity, ISA, which provides human intelligence. H-U-M-I-N-T, human, and signal intelligence, SIGINT. Uh, you get into these terms all the time in NASA documents. Uh, document. uh, so, uh, civil Affairs Operations, CMO, and counterterrorism functions. 
two SOCOM units that specialize in PSYOP include the 193rd Special Operations Wing, 193 SOW, of the Pennsylvania Air National Guard. See, they spread it out amongst all these agencies. Yeah. And the Army's 4th Psychological Operations Group, which is shortened to 4th, capital P-O-G-G, 4th POG. That's the Psychological Operations Group. Um, so, you know, this is just the structure of of uh, of how they go about it I'm, I'm trying to find these psychological uh operation teams and what they do uh, just just a second um what they'll do is they'll send in teams of psychologists and and uh, other professions uh in order to profile people who have been selected yeah and they get information uh, uh about the individual so the, again the the, the six uh, full targeting starts out with uh, selection and then surveillance and then uh, stalking and defamation and then attack with directed energy weapons and then monitor parts of the selection. And in that, they profile. They target so that they will know what themes and products yeah. are best able to use as messages, again, to break the will as a war of attrition and destroy the targeted individual, the adversary, and as you said with Catherine and, and Ramola D, what they really I'm just trying to help get you out of your job. What they really want to do is get you out of your job, get you out of your house, you all of all of your relationships, and get you on the street where they can really work on you and then, you know, kill you. So this is a so this is a take time from individuals. This we we're gonna you're gonna need to go back over uh, what they did. You were reviewing, I think, what I said about them taking away your uh, your support systems, your income, and then putting you out in the street. I heard that. Uh, so that they can really, really get you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, that, that's what they want to do. They, they want to deprive you of all social uh, contacts. They want to make you a, a pariah, have no influence in your neighborhood. They want to cut you off from all human contact so that you know you start to think something's wrong with you uh, they want to deprive you of sleep uh, they want to uh, zap you of course with the directed energy weapons can fry your organs they can uh, you know kill you with a heart attack induced heart attack or sure. cancer at any time so in a sense we're already in the crosshairs we're already they can kill us at any moment but i think we're part of an, a kind of an experimental program for now we're, we're still alive um but, but yeah they, they, again this these are these are protocols, if you want to use the term, uh, for the program, and they would be used throughout the world now. Uh, so I'm, I'm now in Mexico. They would be lots of liaison projects between sure. the U.S. government and the Mexican government in order to, to, to maintain the protocols that have been set up for me so that I would, uh, so there would be continuity. Right. Uh, and there are many, many people like Gloria Naylor in her book, 1996, who say, oh, yeah, I left this country and I went into that country and the same program was, was right. operating, you know, left this state, went into that state. So this is the way it's, it's, it's developed as a, as a global uh, program. Sure. And, of course, it's, it's being developed. Um, let, me, let me go through EPIC, E-P-I-C, Electromagnetic Personnel Interdiction Control, another acronym or whatever, <clears throat> a portable acoustic weapon created by Innovon Incorporated, the U.S. Navy notes, this interferes with a person's equilibrium by sending acoustic pulses of energy which disrupt the chemical and mechanical processes of the vestibular system, which is part of the inner ear that determines right. how sound and positions are processed by the brain. It results in disorientation, confusion, extreme motion sickness and vomiting. It operates through walls and other protective mediums that now provide cover for combatants, that's us, the that's adversaries, us. the insurgents, in urban warfare situations. So I would be designated as a combatant. Yeah. Even though I'm your geography professor with a PhD and a master's and a bachelor's and X number of publications in X number of international journals in my field of specialty, I am targeted as a combatant by our government and it's, you know, networks of power, which, of course, include the military intelligence, the private sector, right. uh, et cetera. Eros, 
event related optical signal maser now see now we're starting to get into the directed energy weapons and yeah i, I hope you and i can talk about this at at, at depth later because okay. uh, i can only handle so much at a time let me let me talk about uh the rumor campaigns uh, this is part of the uh the original early phase of the targeting uh, when they're doing the defamation stage, uh, which goes along with uh, uh, which goes along with uh, um, your your stalking phase, uh, they will actually have their people going into the community doing these rumor campaigns, and what they want to do is get their person, their perpetrator, to to put out a rumor which is within the capability of an average person in your community to understand and then repeat. Right. So again, these fairly low-level rumors, you know, they, they don't want anything too elaborate. They, they have to scale this thing so that so that it'll work. And they right. actually have terminology. I can't find right now the, the wording that Rich used, but they have terminology for the rumor campaign as well. So know that your, you know, your tax dollars are at work and uh, right. doing nice rumor campaigns, right. setting up these psychological operations teams, which are mobile, and then uh, setting up these uh, fourth-generation warfare uh, uh, C4, uh, 4C ISR uh, mobile command and control centers to target you uh, using all of the instruments of power at the disposal of the U.S. government, uh, including unmanned aerial vehicles or drones. And we have another board member in Sawatch County who's liaisoning every month with uh, people who want to bring drones, you know, to the San Luis Valley and uh, Swatch County with a population of 6,000 people in 3,000 square miles. Yeah, we need those drones. You know? Yeah, you need to keep an eye on you. Yeah, so, so we can have, we can, you know, we can, we can do what we do in Afghanistan to our country. Hold on one second. Well, I, I think we're getting the idea here, Paul. Let, let me go through a couple more and then we can just talk about it. Okay. The uh, TPD, the Tactical PSYOP Detachment, is a team of about 13 personnel with a captain and a staff sergeant. I remember in your being interviewed by Dr. Catherine Horton, you mentioned something about that number of 12 or 13, optimal number for getting things done. Well, here we have now the tactical PSYOP detachment, which can be deployed to your neighborhood with 13 personnel, captain and a staff sergeant, uh, comprised of several TPT, tactical mm -hmm. PSYOP team, uh, and provides tactical PSYOP support to brigade and battalion-sized units in support of special forces. You now, again, there's a coordinated system. Uh, TPT conducts mission assessment, determines distribution priorities, and tracks the various products, again, the messages that are being right. prepared in the battle space, which is your neighborhood, uh, to be delivered to the combatant or enemy. Uh, and these have been distributed throughout the AO, the area of operation. All teams maintain contact with each other, and the TPD is in constant communication with other forces such as the TPDD, the PTOTF, POTF, and the TPD during the entire operation. Okay, so these are operations now. They're covert stealth operations conducted civilian military operations in your neighborhood against targeted individuals. And Okay, what about those people in your neighborhood that are perps, that are being convinced one way or another by these rumor campaigns, whatever, right. uh, by a little bit of payola? Mm -hmm. um, what, what about their complicity? Absolutely, they're complicit. And uh, I've got a bumper sticker on my car that says, uh, um, you know, gang stalking is murder. It is. And i got another one that says, gang stalking is terrorism. And I put up little notices in my small community of 1,500 people. Are you a terrorist? Right. And then I say, you know, this is the real terrorist operation. Right. So, you know, I have enough material now on my, uh, my gangstalkingmindcontrol.com website. I've got a lot of flyers that I can put up in my community. So, you know, at what point can my little community, which is struggling to survive, and the real estate is going for pretty cheap, at what point can they still operate and function as a community where people want to live if they're doing this rotten, satanic stuff against right. the members of that community? You see, we're reaching a breaking point. Yeah. I, think we, I think that, you know, by exposing this, 
They can't stay. They have to stop their operations, I hope. Uh, and I don't know if that also works at the level of a big, uh, at the level of a bigger uh, town, but I'm fighting back at the local level, and I will continue to fight back as long as I draw breath. I'll continue to have these uh, bumper stickers, uh, shooters equals CIA, MKUltra. Right. I mean, these people that are doing these shootings are people who are targeted individuals that are victims of, of the most uh, vicious torture. Right. There's the guy who did the naval shooting in the naval yard. You know, he had a gun, a uh, rifle, and, and carved on the stock there. It says, this is my ELF weapon. ELF stands for extremely low right. frequency. He's being tortured by our government. And then he goes and kills some of our people in the naval yard. Well, of course. You know, in fact, they can do silent subliminal messages to them. They can do voice sure. of skull. And we can talk about this next time. All these technologies, laser, acoustic, uh, directed energy weapons, microwave. Um, you know, the technologies, the patents are there. It's in the documents that they want to use these things as that kind of secret warfare. Well, this, this was a fact-filled interview filled with an acronyms and... Uh, but this is how they talk. I know I've worked for the military industrial complex myself, and I know when you talk to them, it's all about it's all about these things. This is how they think, this is how they talk. But it's really important to realize that all these weapons are being used in the battlefield. And as Dr. Kallstrom said in the beginning, the battlefield is the world, and we're the target. You see, this isometric warfare means that Two, two sides aren't fighting. They're the only side fighting. And they're fighting against us. And uh, what they want to do is disrupt our uh, ability to relate to other people, uh, our, our income, and, and everything that makes us us and render us powerless. So I think that's very important to realize that they're using all this military money and equipment against us the people whose consciousness is, is struggling to survive here on the planet. I, I wanted to say, all along we were talking about torture, we were talking about MK Alter, we were talking about terrorism. They're all about the same thing to me. And Trump has come out saying that he's going to be using torture. He finds it an effective weapon. And I think it's just a satanic tool to, uh, to get luge or whatever they get from... Uh, from, from people that are agonized. They also use it to create MK Ultra slaves by uh, disrupting their brain, compartmentalizing them. It's simply a tool. If they really thought torture was working, they would have brought Bin Laden back and tortured him rather than killing him and throwing him into the ocean. That, that never happened, we all know it never happened. But uh, when you allow him to use torture, when you say, yeah, I'm complicit with your use of torture, you're saying, yeah, I'm complicit with your use of torture with me. A silence is complicity. Unless you speak up and say, no, you can't use torture, that's inhumane. I, you know, what? with these sophisticated weapons, they need torture to get information? For heaven's sakes, they can read the inside of your brain and and see what's going on with you, I mean, for heaven's sakes. So, so that's absurd. So anyway, uh, silence is complicity. That's my message for today. And Dr. Carlstrom, would you like to say anything uh, at the end? And also, also, I'd like you to give your websites again. Yeah, thank you very much, Paul, um, Dr. Marco, for, <laughs> uh, for exploring these very, very important and uh, uh, now slightly dangerous subjects, uh, but, uh, you know, I think probably the greater danger is to do nothing, you know. And, Very much so. And the, our silence is complicity, so, uh, yeah, my websites of, of, uh, of interest here would be gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com and 911nwo.com, uh, naturalclimatechange.org, and if you're interested in water issues in the San Luis Valley, San Luis Valley Waterwatch.com. And if you're interested in supporting my my efforts as a musician, it's the only thing I actually ask money for is 
of uh, my music website, which has a number of my CDs, is uh, Eric Carlstrom, my name, E R I C K A R L S T R O M dot com. Although I suppose down in Mexico, I'm Eric Carlos Strum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, yeah, so those are my five websites. I never really retired. I kept busy, except for I was then enabled uh, through, you know, the good aspects of our system uh, to turn my attention to the things that I thought were most important. Right. And, and this has uh, involved moving through a number of subjects. Uh, I mean, to this subject, which I think is you know, so, so, so critical to spread the word, to get the word out, to uh, protect the world's civilian population from this, you know, fourth generation warfare. It's called asymmetric warfare, AW, not isometrical, symmetrical warfare, AW, which is the same as irregular warfare, unconventional warfare, etc. These are all, you know, jargon terms that the military uses uh, to more or less uh, gloss over Citizen torture. And you remember, yeah, with torture, citizen torture. And you're right, you know, all the studies show that you can't rely on a confession made uh, on the basis of torture. Every, every judge to throw that out. So they use torture to get off. And, uh, you know, if you're a Christian, you, 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 you know, you will make the observation that sin uh, controls through deception and fear. Uh, well, our government uh, controls through deception and fear. So uh, we can certainly say that our government and the other institutions we've talked about are satanically energized uh, from the top. And uh, yeah, the Pizzagate thing relates and the Hampstead thing relates and the Franklin cover-up. These people are pedophiles and psychopaths. They, they, they enjoy sex with little children. Uh, they should be shot, in my opinion. I mean, the... the for me, the penalty for pedophilia should be execution. Me too. Um, and, um, and yet our leaders so often are pedophiles. So a lot of our, you know, as George H.W. Bush himself <laughs> tossed the coin at the Super Bowl. You know, he looked like he'd just come back from the taxidermist. Right. He had been, you know, taxidermed or whatever. Right. He had this grin on his face. Uh, but he, he is, uh, was quoted in the 1990s with an interview with Sarah McClendon saying, Sarah, if the American people n knew what we had, they would hang us from the lampposts. Well, George H.W. Bush, show what you've been doing. Uh, what you personally have been doing is featured in one of my articles about the, four, the Bush crime family, four generations of, of, uh, of uh, war against the uh, civilian population. And also, especially in Christopher Story's book on the new underworld order, he identifies George H. W. Bush as one of the major agents right. of what he's looking at as the German Zion Nazi uh, takeover of the world. Um, and he's saying he's one of the main guys, you know. And of course, he was head of the CIA back in nineteen sixty-six. Yeah. He was our real president, de facto president, for almost twelve years in which so much of this uh, structure was put into place. And then, of course, his son was elected. I mean, these are crime families, and these are right. part of the Illuminati structure, uh, which is, uh, you know, satanic. So, um, don't wake up to this. Uh, you know, it, it's um, Michael Hoffman in his great book, uh, Secret Societies and Psychological Warfare, I think we mentioned this, in his uh, stages of the kind of the unveiling uh, of, uh, of uh, psyops that are done against the world and the people of the world, he's saying that the last uh, phase is the revelation of the method in which the leaders admit what they've been doing. And would say, <laughs> now they've told you, if you don't do anything about it, the psyop is twice as powerful. Right. And I are just, you know, you have knuckled in. I have you have claimed your powerlessness. And even say, well, if we tell you what you're going to do, and then we do it, it's not a problem. You know? So in their twisted worldview, uh, that exonerates them. Right. They have, they have what they're doing. And we can step up and say, no way, Jose, uh, you're out of here. Uh, we're going to use the uh, court systems to prosecute you and put you where you belong. So that's that. We have to turn. That's right. Uh, they have lots of 
it's in place that said what they want to do. George Orwell gave a real good description in 1984 of the kind of world that they, they're trying to usher in. So right. I think that said, thank you so much, Dr. Paul Marco. And uh, we're getting, you know, we're still nibbling away at the edges. This huge, satanic torture system. Uh, but the more we expose it, the better a chance of defeating it. That's right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Eric Kallstrom. And until the next interview, have a good time and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.